Hello, fourth grade. Mrs. Ryan here. Today I'm recording from Mulberry Elementary. To get started, we first need to make sure that we, of course, have our perspectives journal, that we have our Robin Hood story. You might be using a digital copy, and that's fine too. And then you need a pencil. I have my handy dandy erasable pen here, so you can hopefully read it better when it's being recorded. Okay. So let's get started. We're actually going to be using two different pages of our journal today. And I know it's kind of awkward because we have to flip back and forth a bit. The first page is page seven. We've already used this one before. It's that literature web info, the help chart. It helps us to figure out how we complete a literature web. It explains the keywords, ideas, images, symbols, feeling, structure, all of that. But our, the web that we're filling out is on page 12. <laughs> so we're kind of going from here to here. I'm just going to bend my, or fold mine, my middle pages like this. You do not have to do this, but I am. Because then I can see both of the pages much easier. And it also doesn't destroy the pages in the middle. I could easily unfold them again. So feel free to do that. I just folded these two pages in half. So now I can go flip, 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 flip. All right. We'll go ahead and get started. I'm probably just being too silly today. So let's go ahead and flip this camera around and we will get started. Awesome. Okay. So we have our story and we have our helper chart going here. The first question on our helper chart are what are some words or phrases you really like and that you think are important? So which words or phrases do you really like and that you think are important? Which of those words are interesting, exciting, or funny? Why do you think the author uses those particular words? Here's how we're going to do this. I'm going to share one of my ideas, and I'll write that down. If you agree, you can share, you can write that one down too. And then you're going to write your own down. So in all, you need at least two responses for each box. I'm going to do this one with you, and then you should pause it, and you can come up with your own. Okay, so one of the words or phrases that I really liked or just stuck out to me stood out to me was actually on page one where it says she's mayhap daft i didn't quite know what that meant at first now i understand that it means that the bishop is calling the merry little old woman crazy and i just think that that's an interesting turn of phrase so i'm going to write quote she's mayhap daft And when I'm looking at my keywords box here, I think that this was interesting, exciting, or funny. I just found this to be interesting. So I'm just going to put comma, interesting phrase. Why do I think the author uses these particular words? That's the next part. Why do I think the author uses those particular words? I think the author did because... It catches our attention, and it really shows how the bishop is being, you know, a little judgmental towards who he thinks is the merry little old woman, even though it's just Robin in disguise, right? So I, I think it was just to grab our attention and to make us see how the bishop jumps to conclusions. Maybe he thinks that he's just smarter than everyone else. So comma, has, you know, we, because we do not have to write complete sentences in these boxes. Um, it shows the bishop to find himself, I'm just going to put smarter than every, smarter than others, smarter than others. The bishop might have a little bit of a complex. So my word or phrase was mayhap daft. I thought it was interesting. 
And I thought the author used it to show us a bit of the character about the bishop. So here's where you should pause the video and you need to come up with your own second example. If you didn't like my example, you just need to come up with two of your own and you just need to answer these questions. Okay, so hopefully you're back. And if you haven't realized it yet, I never filled out the title. Were you yelling at me from the other side of your computer? All right, so Robin Hood and the Merry Little Old Woman. That is a long title. Okay, so let's go ahead and go in the same order as last time, which was backwards, right? Counterclockwise. So let's go with ideas now. Ideas. What is the main idea of the story? Are there other ideas the story seems to share? Wow, I think there's all kinds of different ideas or morals, I guess I could say, in this story. One that pops out to me right away is things are not always as they seem because the bishop really thought that he had he had Robin, but he was overconfident. Maybe I want to change mine to overconfident. So one idea, one idea equals um, don't be overconfident, confident. Don't be overconfident because that's when we make mistakes, right? When we're overconfident, when we're too boisterous. It says, are the, there any other ideas? Well, that's what you're going to come up with. What is he saying about perspective? How do you know? Support your answers with evidence. Ooh, okay. So one idea, right? Number one, one idea is don't be overconfident. And we need to find a quote. I'm going to pause it while I find a quote. So you don't have to sit here and wait for me to find a quote. I'm back and I found a quote to back up my idea that you don't want to be overconfident. And that quote is on... Um, page two, right here, if you can see it, it says the bishop went laughing all the way for pure delight that he had caught Robin Hood. Well, he didn't catch Robin Hood, right? He had a little old woman in disguise, but he was so overconfident that he didn't even check. He didn't look at the face of the person um, that they captured. So that is going to be my quote. Because we have this small little box and this quote is pretty long. We are actually going to shorten it, and I'll show you how to do that. So our quote is going to be, the bishop went laughing all the way. The bishop went laughing all the way, dot, 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 quotation marks. So when we put dot, 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 that indicates that this quote actually goes on, but we're just not going to write the whole thing down. You also want to put the page number it was found on, page P2. So my one, of, one idea from the story is don't be overconfident. The bishop went laughing all the way and so on. So now you need to find a second idea. Right, what you think another idea is, there's many from the story, so don't think there's a right or wrong answer here. And then find a quote to back you up. If you need to shorten the quote, you can put the dots at the beginning of the quote or a beginning or at the end. Awesome. Hopefully you're back. Okay, so now we are going to work on structure. Down at the bottom, structure. Let's look at structure. What are some characteristics of, this, of the way the story is written? Do you feel dialogue is important to the story? Why or why not? Does it tell, what does it tell you about each character and their perspective of the dilemma? Why is setting important? Okay, we're just gonna do what we did last time. I will work with you on these first few questions. And then here is where you'll, you'll pick it up, right here where it says what. I believe last time that's what we circled. Is that what? All right, so what are some characteristics of the way the story is written? Well, it's definitely in what we would call Old English, right? It was kind of hard to read out loud. My brain kept wanting to change the words around so it would match how we speak today. So I think that's important. Um, 
I'm going to split mine in half again. You do not have to, but I need to. I can't write in long sentences across. I'm going to write the, see, I already forgot the question, the way this story is written. All right. Um, story is in Old English, but that's also because this, but actually, no, the story is only from the 1900s, and this is written, the setting is written in medieval times. So I think the story is in Old English to, to make it feel like you're actually there. Like you're the reader and you are in medieval times and there is this guy running around called Robin Hood and stealing from the rich and giving to the poor. So I'm going to put that. Story is in Old English to help set up the scene. And time. It makes the reader it makes the reader understand the setting. I was a little repetitive there, but that's okay. Good thing this isn't a paper, right? It's just a a, a web. So here's where you're going to pick up. What does it tell you about each character and their perspective of the story? Here's what I suggest. I suggest you just write down some of the characters' names, right? You have Robin Hood. Robin Hood. And then you have the bishop. The bishop. And you have the merry men. Merry men. And of course you have the little woman, little old woman. So I suggest you just write their names down and then you put a little blurb about their perspective of the story. Like how are they feeling? The bishop, probably surprised, right? Overconfident and then surprised the merry little old woman. Well, she was just having that gay old time, right? She's happy, she's singing. Everything's great with the world. So go ahead and pause it and fill that in and make sure there's um, nothing else that you would like to add into structure. And when you're ready, come right back. All right. Hopefully you're back. So let's now look at images and symbols. Where is that at over here? Ah, images and symbols. What are some pictures or images that came to your mind as you read the story? What are some things in the story that might have more than one meaning? How do these images and symbols shape your perspective of the story? And what is happening? I think that we focus on this question right here. I think that will help us out. What are some pictures or images that come to your mind as you read the story? Well, I don't want to take this away from everybody, but I think that we all imagined the the lady dancing right dancing and singing in her little hut hey down down and a down right she curtsies to one side of the room curses to the other so i'm i'm gonna write that one down what are some pictures or images okay so the old lady dancing and singing Mm, how does this shape my perspective of the story? I think it makes me it makes me feel that the old lady doesn't take things too seriously. She's very fun and she tries to make the best of her life. Clearly she doesn't have a lot of money. She's poor, but she's still happy because she's I, she's just in a positive mood. So it tells us that she is happy and makes the best of things. I mean, maybe if I sing more when I'm doing my chores, I'll be more happy about it. Ha <laughs> ha. All right, so I have one here. You need to come up with a second. What is another image or symbol or something that you saw clearly in your mind as you read the story? And then um, the second part of that, remember, is how does that shape your perspective of what is happening? What does that kind of show you? All right, go ahead and pause that so you can complete number two and then come on right back. Okay, hopefully you're back. We
We are on feelings now. The last one, feelings, which is oddly all the way over here. What feelings did you get when you read the story? What words or events in the story gave you those feelings? How do you think the characters felt during those times? Okay, a feeling. Oh, I was laughing. I was surprised. I was also worried. Ah, oh, I'm going to put that. I was anxious, actually. Um, I was anxious. Anxious. I was anxious equals because I was afraid that Robin or the old lady would get caught. I didn't want them to get caught. Uh, I like their characters. So I was nervous about that. Um, and then the next question is, what words or events in the story gave you those feelings? I guess I have to find a quote. So I'm going to find a quote here. I'm going to hit pause so you don't have to wait on me. I found one. It's right here on the front page. Here's the, the lady all the way here. It reads, it'll mayhap come to pass that I'll wish I had something to stand on, said Robin grimly, for the proud bishop is in the forest and he's after me with all his men. So I'm going to start my quote right here. The proud bishop is in the forest and he's after me with all his men. So since I'm not going to start off with the beginning of the quote, I need to put dot, dot, dot to indicate that. There's actually more to this sentence, but I'm only writing this section. The proud bishop... is in the forest and he's after me. Oh, actually I'm just gonna put dot, dot, dot. Boop, boop. Page, no, that doesn't make sense. Are you guys telling me that doesn't make sense? I should write more. You're right, you're right, you're right. In the forest and he's after me. And he's after me. Now it makes more sense, dot, 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 because the quote still goes on. And this is on page one, P1. So now you need to come up with, this was the first one, and now you need to come up with a feeling that you got from the story, why you got that feeling, and then show where that happened as you read it with a quote. Make sure you put the page number, especially if you don't write the whole quote like I did. That way... Um, your teacher, Mrs. Steinle, Mrs. Walker, or myself, we would be able to find which quote you are referring to. And that's it. Ta-da! Um, finally, we just want to end with, and I say we because I'm speaking for all of the teachers. We just want to say thank you so much for all of your hard work. This is definitely a tough quarter to be remote so many times a week. We really do appreciate all your hard work. You are amazing. Keep up the great work. When you, you know that you're finished when yours has at least two for each section. All right? If you have any questions, be sure to send us a Schoology message or email. Bye, everyone.